Welcome to my presentation. Today, I'll take you to the journey in the new world of microspace. Throughout the human history, a development of medicine for cure of diseases has brought us a large degree of prosperity and well-being. As an introduction, let's look back at the history of medicine. According to the historical record, the world's earliest pharmacopoeia was published in the year 77. Until the end of the 18th century, the human health care had involved the use of herbal medicine. However, a pharmacologically active molecular component was not identified, so we had little knowledge about why and how um, uh, herbal medicine actually functions in the body. The era of scientific medicine starts from the 19th century. That is when humans succeeded in purifying the uh, molecular active component, uh, act pharmacologically active uh, component from the herbal medicine, and also synthesized them in parallel with the progress in the research field of organic chemistry. Now, in the 21st century, the medicine, category of medicine, is expanding from the raw molecular compound to the macromolecules, including um, antibody, protein, nucleic acid, and genes. So uh, the field of my research is gene therapy. In this era, gene is also considered to function as medicine. The important question is how drugs actually work in the body. When drugs are administered orally, they're absorbed at gastrointestinal tissues and then enter to the blood. When drugs were administered intravenously, they are directly uh, entered to the blood circulation and then transported to the uh, cells in the, uh, some tissues. So to maximize the function of genes or, uh, in my case, genes or some drugs, they must be transported to the specific locations where they are needed and for as long as needed and in the quantity needed. So now, how are we to meet this criteria? This is a, a one of the crucial topics in the research field of drug delivery system. So when chemical drug that is, small molecular compound was administered into the blood. They can enter to the cells depending on its physical chemical characters. However, when genes were uh, administered, they cannot enter to the cells due to its large molecular size. And furthermore, they are literally degraded uh, by the enzymes that are present in the cell, uh, in the blood. So moreover, the gene must be delivered to the nucleus, an organelle that are located, locating in the center of the cells. And they are protected by uh, membrane structures. So for the efficient delivery of the gene to the nucleus, at least three barriers have, must be overcome. First barrier is plasma membrane, and second barrier is cytoplasm, an aqueous fluid that fills the cells. This region is as, um, rich in the uh, large variety of the molecules, including sugar, RNA and proteins. So uh, this region is highly viscous. 
then a diffusion of the macromolecules, including genes, are quite poor. Therefore, a gene must have some um, driving force to gain access to a nucleus. One of the strategies is use microtubules that are uh, uh, spread through the cells from the uh, nucleus neighboring microtubule organizing center. Then, final barrier is nuclear membrane, a uh, double uh, uh, lipid barriers that encodes the genomic DNA and separating the uh, nuclear component from the cytoplasm. So, along with the uh, <clears throat> revolution of life for past hundred or million of years, viruses also evolved and develop their sophisticated machinery to deliver their genomic DNA into the nucleus of the host cells. Uh, for example, uh, viruses can attach themselves to the motor proteins that are running on the microtubules. So uh, for the uh, travel through the intracellular space, we are now in process of developing a um, nano-sized seed, small seed, which we refer to as multifunctional envelope type nano device. The key element of this particle is genes and their condensing polycations, polymers, and their enclosing two types of envelope structures an outer envelope for overcoming the endosomal membrane and inner envelope for overcoming the nuclear membranes. Furthermore, on the surface of this particle, we can modify various types of the functional materials. One of the examples is ligand for the cellular uptake. So now, let's see how it works in the cells. First, the particle bind on the plasma membrane via receptors or sugar chains. And then they are engulfed in the uh, uh, cells. When this particle remains in the uh, vesicular compartment, that is endosome, they are transported to the degradation pathways so to avoid from the degradations, the particle must escape from endosomes. So in this process, the outer envelope functions. That means the outer envelope fuses with the endosomal membrane and delivers the inner particle into the cytoplasm. Thereafter, this inner particle needs uh, right on some uh, the microtubule dependent transport to gain access to the nucleus. So we are now in process of the developing of development of the uh, functional material which can target the motor protein that are running on the microtubules. Finally, the nu uh, inner particle fuses with the nuclear membrane and delivers encapsulating uh, genes into the nucleus. So <clears throat> we hope uh, this technology will bring uh, innovation in future gene medications. One of such examples is DNA vaccine. In some types of cancer cells, various proteins are uh, overexpressed. So this protein can be used as marker or antigen of the cancer cells. Meanwhile, in the body, dendritic cells play the key role in initiation or regulation of immunoresponses. So in the DNA vaccine technology, we can educate the dendritic cells by delivering the genes that encode the antigen proteins. So when a uh, gene transfer can, is successful, 
the dendritic cell can now recognize that the cells possessing this antigen protein are foreign objects. Then uh, this dendritic cell activates the immunoresponsive cells, including T cells. And finally, the T cells kill the cancer cells, specifically depending on it, the antigen proteins on the surface of the cancer cells. So for the innovation of the nano size SIP, we need uh, to collaborate with diverse field of researchers. First, biology. For understanding cell and viruses, and for design of the functional materials. Second, chemistry. For synthesizing the functional materials and imaging probes. Third, physics. That is, nanotechnology for molecular assembly, DNA packaging, and uh, integration of functional materials for particle formation. Also, imaging technology is quite important in terms of investigating how particles travel through the intracellular space. And finally, pharmaceutics. For anal to analyze the pharmacokinetics, pharmacology, and for safety testing. So I have uh, involved uh, this uh, project for past 10 years. So uh, one idea appeared to me very recently. <coughs> uh, it might be uh, quite exaggerous. However, uh, what I'm now challenging is 21st century equivalent of the Apollo project. As you know, the spaceship can be regarded as a system in which many pieces of equipment were highly integrated. In the process of the traveling to the moon, a part of the equipment functioned to overcome the barriers and then become dissociated after finishing their works. So uh, uh, without dissociations, the function of onboard equipment tend to mutually interfere. Also, this dissociation process can uh, switch on, trigger the switch on of the uh, next function of the uh, uh, not next functional equipment. So collectively, this stepwise uh, dissociation is quite important characteristic to permit that each piece of the onboard equipment do function at proper space, a pro proper place, and with appropriate timing. So this uh, sophisticated machinery were innovated by the collaboration of a huge number of people uh, with big variety of the background. So, uh, I'm now challenging is analogous to the APRA project. That means, uh, based on the uh, nano size SIP with a stepwise dissociative envelope structures, we are challenging to overcome the cellular barriers to eventually reach the nucleus. So my dream is development of the technology for transporting the molecules to wherever we want it to go in the cells. And this is a key technology for the, um, uh, achieving the breakthrough in the uh, uh, research field of drug delivery system and for opening the next generation of human medications. Of course, we need to collaborate with many researchers in a variety of, in variety of science and uh, in governmental laboratories. So finally, please join us. Thank you very much.